What's this you've been doing, Chris Guthrie? Don't know. <laughs> Where's you on? I'm here, Chris. Ah, uh, he ran all the way to Peasy's nap. Well, that's fine. Now let's be seeing a bit more of you, young Mistress Tavendale. Ah, uh, it's fine. <clears throat> Uh-huh. And you tell me you didn't know what this thing was, Chris Avondale? Oh, yes. But not you, in. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? What's the matter? You're going to be a father, blow-weary man. What do you think of that? You mean, Chris is... Away and make me a cup of tea while Chris and I go into more intimate details. God, Chris, why didn't you, you tell me? You need you, in. She's safe enough for me. Bonnie though she is. Now, away will you now and make the tea. Uh, I'll do that. Aye. <laughs> Right, Chris. Let's see if everything's all right. For a market for to see, I fell in when I was too far north. A man yards a look at me. It's damned easy for him to sing, eh, Chris? Still, you'll be singing yourself when this bear of yours comes into the world. Why, is there something wrong? No, no, there's nothing wrong. You have a body as fine and natural and comely as a cow or a rose, Chris Guthrie. You have no need to worry, so don't fret. No, but look after yourself. Eat plenty of vegetables. And still be as kind to you and as the wearer of the month's electric. Be good for you and good for him. All right. Where's that tea, then? <clears throat> With you and knowing, it was as though a bank had gone down. But no torrent or storm came to blind and overwhelm me. There was nothing but the corn growing and the peewits calling. Summer coming, marching up each morning with unbraided hair. Chris! Don't run! And you don't blether. There's no need to fret. I'm not a doll. You have to be careful. The doctor said I'd be safe as a cow. I hope to God I don't look like one. You look fine. Bonnier than ever. I can hardly believe that this weather will last. It won't. Not in the nature of things. The rain comes in the night. Just enough, not more. You could want for better sun in the day. Maybe things are changing for the better all round. Behind your fears. No, I'm certain some tricks on up there. Oh, well, we'll enjoy it while it lasts. I've been scrubbing out my old room. I'd like the bairn to be born in it. Aye, there's to be a family down at Bulwaria here. <laughs> Chris must fear a taken at the first bit set. Maybe. If you ask me, the taken was well before the marriage. Is that a fact? It's the speaker can ride it. I say that you and only marry the Queen when she threatened them with the law. I'll go out and kick the backsides off. Oh, don't, don't be daft, you and folk would think it all the truer of the scandal. If it makes them any happier to think as they do, let them think. Dirty-minded tanks. You oh, and I could almost wish that we had bedded unblessed. The pen would have been here by now. Sit in and take your meat and don't worry about it anymore. <laughs> You and the Edmund. Aye, come in, Che. Have you seen the paper? There's a war on. Britain's at war with Germany. Oh, aye. Is that all you have to say? I'm telling you, there's a war on, man. I am, Joe. But I've got other things to think about. I mean, how's your corn coming on, Che? I mean, I doubt if this weather doesn't break it, it'll ruin it. Oh, here, man, read it for yourself. Ah, you and your war. Well, I can fight till they're black and blue, as far as I'm concerned. Only the lay field would come on a bit faster. And the straw's that short, it would fair break your heart. And out he went in the evening light, down to the lay park, and poked about there, rig to rig, as though he was coaxing the corn to grow and ripen in the night, for his delight in the morning. Bairn with a toy, I thought. And then came that movement in my body, as that other seed of his burgeoned and ripened and grew to harvest. Ewan! Ewan! Did 
die Stelle. What is it, Chris? The bin. Aye, it'll maybe be a long time yet, but get Shay to drive with the doctor and the nurse from Burvey. I can't leave you like this. Oh, hurry, I'm fine. Go and lie down. I can't find what to do. Now hurry, will you? Aye. <laughs> Of swearing and swearing. Terrible words I hadn't known I knew. But it was better than screaming. And then Ewan was back and emerged from the white blur. But something was worrying me. What are you to have for your dinner? Hey? <laughs> Ball yourself, Meg, you. What? Do you want something, Chris? Boil what, did you say? Oh, boil your head if you like. Ewan, help me up to my room. Well, Chris, lass, how do you feel? It's a fine thing to send for us in such a stewer, and here we come tearing up to find you sleeping like a lamb. This is Mr. Sogilby. You've heard of her. Dreams. Terrible dreams. My father and Will and... Burning like a furnace. Uh, don't you bother with that now. Do you feel you're getting on fine? It shouldn't be very long now. I'll wait downstairs. Oh! Now, don't you do that, Mistress Tavendale. Don't grip yourself up. Slacken and it's easy. Wish it to come. There's a brave girl. Wish it to come. That's it. Shouldn't you be up there with a doctor? Man, if there's one thing I hate, it's a confinement. You got your corn in yet, Mr. Strachan? No, why? I, the Ewan, was the first in Kinradi here. You've been lucky with the weather, by all accounts. Oh, we have that, mm. oh. It's been gay, wet up by the D folk, say, and down at Forfar, there's been a wet year. Ah! You're doing fine, lass. Oh. Fine. Have you picked a name for him yet? If it's a boy, that is. Oh, Chris wants to call him Ewan. God, what's keeping them? What's the time? Oh, it's just uh, 12 o'clock and no more. And you, you and Tavendale has just come into the world, man. <laughs> My baby. Beside you. Don't crush him. My baby. He's bonny and perfect. Wish now he's sleeping. My, you're the lucky one. Bringing in the best in the forenoon. Some folk have disgraced from dawn to dusk. I am through another night to another day. Aye. I know. And then the baby opened its eyes and fluttered them at me and yawned. And I saw a tongue like a little red fish in the little red mouth. And the blue shaded eyelids went down again. And young Ewan Tavendale slept. He was hungry. The nurse said I could come up. I was up before, but you were asleep. Oh, Chris. Oh, my baby. God, am I like to forget? Uh, 
Here's the Grand Prix of Yeoman last bit bit on the left. Get a stop to the screen. What's the machine? Let's get a stop time. Two pounds at a fair pile. One phone arm bit. One phone arm bit. One phone two. One foot two arm bit four. One foot four arm bit no. One foot four. Cut the phone. One foot four arm bit six. And one foot six arm bit no eight. And one foot three arm bit two. One foot three arm bit three. And there's a brown arm bear. One foot ten arm bit no. One foot ten. Hello, you win. Who's the bear? Fine. So is Chris. Hey, man, the mark's bad today. <laughs> Seems nobody wants to speak of anything but the war. Uh, that fair devia. Mitch and Monroe were going around saying they'd miss the morning if they were younger. <laughs> Aye, I saw them. They looked as though they had a fair drink in their pants. Aye, they had. And it was the drink talking. I hear James Leslie. You know, they took your places four minutes up our hill. Aye. So we up to Aberdeen tomorrow to join the Gordon. Ah, he's daft. Showing off, looking for a holiday. The war will soon be over. You think so? The newspapers say it will. Oh, aye, the papers are right fierce. And some of those editors are rough creatures. Good pity the Germans have they laid their hands on them. Aye, the newspaper bullies are hard to counter. Mind, the Germans just go on with their raping the women and gutting the bairns. They don't seem to care. But maybe the Germans don't read the papers. My God, it makes you sick just to read it. I'm off to what unless... You're havering, man. You don't mean it. Damn it, I do. What about Kirsty? What about Peasy's nap? Oh, Kirsty will be all right, and her father can look after the farm. I'm telling you, you win. We'll all need to live, fight for our wives and bairns before this war's over. Right, Chris. Good night, Chief. That'll cause a speak and a stir in Kinradi. Oh, Che's just being patriot daft. He doesn't know when he's being laughed at. Poor Kirsty. Oh, Ewan, this war's causing a fair upset. Sugar's awful up in price. I was thinking I should maybe get some from the grocer and store it away in the barn. Aye, you might as well. I was thinking of uh, going to the Kirk on Sunday. I thought you couldn't bear with the Kirk. Oh, well, I might break my habit this time. I was hearing the Reverend Gibbon preach the guy queer sermon last Sabbath. He might do the same again. The crowd that turned up to hear his sermon was more than the previous week. And the place was all on edge to hear what he would say. There was nothing unusual as he gave out the hymn and the prayer. But then he took the text. It was about Babylon's corruptions. They'd been a right course lot there. And I say this. Babylon was no more corrupt than the wicked and lustful world we live in today. God has sent the Germans for a curse on the world because of its sins. God's anger is loosed as it was in the days of Attila. How long it will rage, to what depths of pain your punishments will go, only God in his anger will know. But from this chastisement by blood and fire, the nations may rise anew. A Scotland, not least in its ancient health and humility, to tread again the past. I'll no stay here and listen to that brute defending these coarse German tanks and some friend of his called Attila. No more will I, Coniston. I finished early and rattled off the blessing as though it was a cursing. Is it true that some of the young folk were waiting for him in the kirkyard? They were going to clout him in the lug when he came out. But the elders were there and edged them away. Gibbon just made for the manse and padlocked the gate. <laughs> Did you hear that, you? Ah, uh, Gibbon might be right or wrong about his babblings and whores. And he can slobber on about Attila every night of the week. I don't care one way or the other. That's so? No, nope. has got all its crops in. That's all that matters. Well, I've made time for the pro-Germans. That's what the papers call them. 
British folk that think these German rascals are right. The papers are full of the pro-Germans now. I was reading that in England, folk went and smashed their windows in. Serves them right, no wonder. Folk are in our age with the pro-Germans being so coarse. Ach, what a blither about a war. Isn't it you and... Uh, hey, Chris. Did you see him look at me just now? No, oh, I... I dare say you're both douce and safe and blithe here at Blueberry. Have you heard from Jane? I had a letter last Saturday. He's joined the North Highlanders. They're sending him to Perth. Kinradi's an anchor place without him. Chris, you'll never come back. Oh, he will. It'll all be over long before he's sent to France. It's, it's, it's such a rage with the Germans being so coarse. He'll just run forward into his bit of the front and kill and kill till he's lost himself. Maybe, maybe they're not such bad folk as the papers make out. I'm pro-German as well, are you? Chris, there's how many of your kind in Kinradi. Kirsty, I can't mean... go, Chris. You know what she's like. In a week's time, she'll be ashamed of her outburst. Aye, likely the Reverend Gibbon will have second thoughts about his. And I tell you this. The Kaiser is the Antichrist until the Germans have been beaten and this foul evil swept from the earth, there will be neither peace nor progress. Gibbons fear become a petrie. But it's more likely he thinks the chance of losing his Gherkin collection a damn sight worse than any German that was ever clicked. Oh, it's fear of scandal all through the hole. You can hardly believe it. Long Rob doesn't hold with the war. It's what a damn nonsense. Those that want to fight the MPs and bankers and editors they should be locked up in a park and made to gut each other with grapes. The man's a pro-German, that's what he is, a pro-German. There'll be no great loss to the world. A fine bit sight it would make for decent folk to look on. Well, the others can do what they like. I'm not so daft as to leave the best miller for miles around. Just because he says all the Germans can hardly be tinks. <laughs> it's a folk with sense to take part in the sauce and yammer at king and country is just plain hysteria. And as for Belgium being invaded, got what it needed. What about the Congo? Not that the Germans aren't as bad. They're all tarred with the same black brush. Och, there's little danger that anybody will smash Rob's windows. Rob's a well-liked Billy, and you needn't heed his blether. The whole store will soon blow over. And I say this, that even as Jael showed her patriotism and holiness in killing Sisera, to become a light unto Israel, or so must we in like manner act the same. And right here, in our midst, there are traitors that side with the Antichrist. Shame on Kinradi that had be so. Kaiser's crony. Come on, let's duck the mucker. Aye, 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 lads, and he having a bit exercise after your Sunday dinner. You'll soon find out, Duncan. The minister made a few suggestions about how to deal with pro-Germans. And what am I this time? Long rob the Antichrist's friend. Come on, lads, into the bun we are. Aye. Aye. Come on, let's... Oh. There's a whole crowd of billies away up to the mill, and I think they mean Rob some harm. Do they? Smashing my window, would you then? Would you, you scum? Take care, man! 
Hey, that sounded like Rob's shotgun. These people think the Germans have landed and are looting the men's. Look! Man, Rob, what's this? Just some fellas that had a notion to duck me in the mill barn. By God, they'll hardly sit down for a week with the pellets on their backsides. Patriots. It's a damn poor show for Scotland if a patriot's hair on as hard as that. You're no hurt, Rob. No, I'm fine. But I know somebody that won't be. Stand out my way there, Rob. After you tell me what the hell you meant by saying that I was friends with the Antichrist. Get out my way! Stand you still first, my man, for we've a bit of a bone to pick. Now, who's pro-German? You're a... You're a coarse tank brute, Duncan. I heard what happened at the mill. And if you weren't to fight like that, you should go to France and do it. I'd made up my mind that I'd smash your bit nose for you. He just strike and strike until the bone gives way. I'm, I'm, I'm warning you, Duncan. <sighs> You're just a half-witted cleric. Get going while the going's good and your hide's intact. So that was the result of the Reverend Gibbon's sermon. And for a few days, Kinradi fair seethed with the news. But I didn't care. Sitting there at Blawiri with young Ewan at my breast, and my man beside me. We knew there was a war and bloodshed, and that was awful, but far off also. You'd hear it like the North Sea crying in the morning. A crying and a thunder that became unending as the weeks went by. It was part of life's plan, fringing the horizon of your days with its pelt and uproar. So it went on in the winter and into the next year. The spring of life, eh, Chris Quine? Sing it and cherish, for it'll never come again. Hello, Rob. You're looking for Ewan. Aye. He's ploughing up on the brayside. Oh, aye. Oh, I've just a few bills to settle with one of my few customers. Are Much and Cuddiston still carting their corn up into the mill at the Mundines? Aye. Well, I've nothing to do with a pro-German. Does Munro still call you that? He does. Ah, oh, but not in my face. He's all course in the feet, Munro, to run as fast as the other oh. billies. <laughs> Ewan's doing well. I hear he's taking in a drove of Irish steers. Well, fat and well. 1916's been a good year for grass. Aye. I'm fair proud of the amount of beasts of Blueiri. You know, Rob, I can hardly believe that it was here that my father charred and fought for a living the way he did. Aye, Chris. But that was before the war. Man, Shay, you look right fine as a soldier. The lass is lobby wanting your buttons. Uh, what dish you've got in your arm, Nanny? Och, they made a copper, let me just. You'll be right proud of yourself, Shay, aye. And so you should be doing your patriotic duty. I like here, Stella, fell great patriot. I was one of the first to enroll with the Glenberry volunteers. Man, Shay, we were making some fearsome sacrifices for this war. I was down at Drumlithy every other night for the drilling. No, oh, it was a sight for sore eyes. The gowks prancing about like dogs with diarrhea. Eh? <laughs> That's what you reminded me of. And when do you think the war will end, she? Oh, God only knows. Oh, you still believe in him, then? Well, maybe I have my doubts sometimes. 
And how are all the folks in Kinradi then? Oh, fine, Jimmy, fine. There have been changes, but all for the better, as you'll see for yourself. Ah, oh, that's more than some wealth. What do you mean? The Gordon boy. He was wounded out in France. He got blinded. Oh, it's a fell pity. He fair screamed at his mother when she went to see him. He pulled aside the bandages and showed her the great red holes in his head. Ah, he said he'd be home right soon to crawl around the parks and show them to every bitch in the Mairns that's looking for a hero. When do you think it'll finish, then? Oh, devil knows, June. My well, is not so bad if it wasn't for the lice. Lice? <laughs> oh, God, they're awful. Oh, but don't be feared, Chris. Kirsty made me stand outside and strip off everything I had on. She flung all my clothes into one tub and made me get into another, so I'm felt clean now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you think of the Germans? Oh, yes, of course, as folks say. I'm damned if I know you. I've hardly seen one alive. I've seen one or two bodies now and then. Aye, bodies, grey, green, and... <laughs> There's a supper on the table. But uh, you must have met up with some live ones in the fighting. Oh, I've been out there, you hardly fight at all. You just lie about those damn bit trenches and have a kick at the soil they're made of. Clay, is it, like round here? It's clay and like in a black marble. It's funny land. Mind you, the French have no use as farmers at all. They just plight and bother about these damn little parts. You'd hardly use them as a hunky to blow your nose. <laughs> you, you don't sound over fond of them. I don't like them at all. The damn poor folk to fight for. Me and them dirt. Not half as sweet. You don't think I should uh, join up then, Jim? You and... There's fools enough in the fighting as it is. <laughs> I was asking only. Just you lie still. I'll be up in a minute. Kirsty, what the hell? How long has this been going on? What's going on? What are you talking about? The larch wood. That's for cutting down the larch wood. Oh, aye. Makes a guy difference to the lookout. But the woodmen have been a grand thing for Kinradi. They've been lodging here and paying fine and well for their board. The hell with the board, the bastards. They're ruining my land. Do you hear? I've got to sort them. But have you gone fair mad with the killing of Germans? Look, have you no eyes in your head, you fool? Why didn't you tell me this in your letters? If that wood's cut down, it'll lay the whole place open to the northeast. And that's fair the end of a living for anybody here. I'm no fool, Chase Jackin. And if that's the case, we'll be no worse off than the other folk here. All the woods in Kinradi are due to come down. And when I went out and looked, she was right. Over by the mains, they came upon the woodmen, teams and teams of them. And above up our hill, they cut down the latch. Spared nothing but the ewes at the manse. Aye, the trustees have sold the timber right well. It's wanted for aeroplanes and such like things. I minded these woods often when I was out in France, Rob. So bonny they were. And thick and grave. Find shelter and light for the cattle. I went to see the factor about it. It'll be all right, Mr. Strachan. The government's going to replant all the trees as soon as the war's been won. That'll console me a bloody lot, I'm sure. And then he said, we must all do our bit at sacrificing something. And what sacrifices has he made? Tell me that, you scrawny wee mucker, I said. Ah, oh, well, maybe that's no fair, Chief. He's a decent enough child and no fit to fight. Oh, I was that mad. I don't know what I said to him. I don't much care. That's ah, true, though. Book of change. Yeah, every soul in Kinradi is making money and they don't care that the war outlasts their lives. Much is making money like a dung heap makes Surrex ham. Oh, why, we're doing fine. I got myself a new car and the wife's bought us a piano. Man, you'll be wanting to get back to the front line, eh? Back to the front line. He'd fear be wrong in the betting. I asked him if he ever heard of a woman wanting a new beer and put back in her womb. The Gaukai Gumro. And it was just the same everywhere I went. There's not one of them cares that the whole place is laid waste and shaved of its timbers till it's just a, a waste of heath and heather. They're money mad, Rob. I went over to Cuddiston. Oh, but they were so busy that hardly time to notice me. Oh, we are rearing chickens with a hundred che in these bit incubators. The hospitals in Aberdeen pay a fine price for them. Ah, uh, well, we'd better get on with our work. Fine being a soldier like you with your holidays and all, but poor folk I have to work. All right. She's I been a thin-nibbed, footed creature, that one. Oh, I'm in Robert's real shame for her. But he'd hardly time to offer me a dram, so anxious he was with his new brood of hens. 
Now that it mattered, the place got on my stomach. You'll have heard the Reverend Gibbons going. Ah, he's a colonel chaplain in Edinburgh, someone like that. Oh, I'm told he wears a right brave uniform with a black hunky around the neck of it. Mm. His father's come to take his place. What's he like? Oh, an old bit stock that drinks German blood by the gel with his porridge by the way he preaches. Ah, and yet I still think this war'll bring some good to the world, yeah. It'll be the end of armies and fighting forever. Havers? No. The day of socialism will dawn. The common folk have seen what their guns can do and they'll use them if they have to when they come back. The common folk when they aren't sheep or swine. You're an exception, man. Being a goat. <laughs> ah, well, we'll see. I'd best get back to Kirsty. Marie's not long to go. Would come with the morning, man, if only. If only what, man? If only I wanted to be easy. Easy and a liar. But I've never gone that gate yet. And I'm damned if I'll begin it for any bit war. That year, the harvest came in fine. And I thought it near time that another bairn should come to Blue Erie. And... As the nights went on, I whispered to myself, in the spring, I'll tell him. Aye, Chris, conscription. He'll have heard about it, surely. It means that folk have to fight whatever they say, and they get shot as they don't. That's about it. Ah, but don't worry about you, and they don't take folks that farm their own land. Though likely you'll have to go up to Aberdeen with the rest of us to be examined. But what about yourself, Rob? My papers came this morning. Oh, Rob. <laughs> Fine. Ah, oh, like a bit of a jaunt. <laughs> Tell me what happened. Well, there was a whole crowd of us in the one carriage, mostly ploughmen. All of them swearing they didn't give a button whether they were taken or not. What about Rob? Oh, he just sat there, smoked his pipe and said nothing. It was the same at the place we went to. They finished with the ploughmen and the whole jing bang were past the soldiers. Except me, of course. <laughs> and then they called long Rob. <laughs> he wouldn't stir out of his jacket, even. What's so funny? Oh, Chris, you should have seen them. They danced round him, swore at him, and he just puffed his smoke up into their faces, calm as you like, as if they were a cloud of midges on a summer's day. <laughs> now, be reasonable, man. You were supposed to have reported to Aberdeen Barracks a couple of days back. Aye. You can find that your case has been heard by the exemption board in Stonehaven. Aye. They tell me the chairman's a wee grosser man that works night and day to send other folk to fight the Germans. They said you couldn't have exemption. Aye, that was sad. Damn it! How'd you like the idea of other folk calling you a coward? Fine, man, fine. I'd rather any day be a coward than a corpse. Oh, I have no more time to argue. Are you coming or are you not? If you want me, carry me. Couldn't hardly do that. Faith, no. You'd look fair daft wheeling me along the road in the tail of your bicycle. When they came for him, it needed three of them to take Rob of the Mill off to the war. And what happened to him next? There arose this rumor. Some said he was in jail. Some said he'd given in. Some said he'd escaped and was hiding in the hills. But nobody knew for sure. Che was gone. Rob was gone. Our best friends were out of Kindradi now. But we had ourselves. You want me to see to the cattle before I muck out the stable? Damn it, man. You should have both done by this time. You've been standing about with your hands in your pockets. No, what the hell? Well, see to the stables, man. You shouldn't talk to Brigson like that, Ewan. He seems to be getting the set of things of Lewiri now. He's handless. I'd never have taken him on if the crops hadn't come on so thick. Anyway, we're lucky to have him with things the way they are. And he's making real friends with young Ewan. Oh, he is, is he? What's wrong, Ewan? Nothing. You've been like this for days, just sitting at your meat. Silent and saying nothing. Are you feeling ill? Or, or is there something troubling? Damn it, I said there was nothing. 
keep an eye on Brixen while I'm away. Where are you going? To Aberdeen, if you must know. Bed, John, I'll finish these. No, no, I'll lend a hand with the dishes. If we buy, I've still got the cattle to tend. John, I'm... I'm sorry the master spoke to you the way he did. He, he was just out of temper this morning. He's worried about his business. That's why he's away to Aberdeen. Oh, never heed, mistress. He'll be as right as rain when he gets back tonight. Aye. I was expecting him off that last train. Oh, but there's another train still. It's uh, ten o'clock. I thought I heard somebody moving about. But were you not near bed? John, he's not back. I walked a wee bit down the road to meet him, but the last train's been gone half an hour. Do you think something's happened to him? No, no, no. What could have happened to the master? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he got knocked down or something. Oh, no, they'd have sent you a telegram. No, he just missed the train. And he'll, he, he'll have got on as far as Stonehaven. He'll be walking from there. Aye. Aye, that's what's happened. I wish you to bed, John. Good night, then, mistress. Good night, John. Good night. The weary was so quiet. In the night air, you could smell the turned grass of the plowlands, wet with the fresh fallen dew. So young the year, and so sweet. I'd make it this night, the night with you and I'd planned. But the night had gone, and still Ewan hadn't come back. <laughs> nor came he back that day, nor many a day beyond that. But the postman at noon brought me a letter. It was from Ewan. Dear Chris, I've grown sick of having folk like Much and Monroe always laughing and sneering at me for being a coward, so I've joined the North Highlanders. I'll be writing to let you know where they have sent me. In the meantime, you're not to worry. Yours truly, Ewan. Hi, oh, mistress. Is the master not back yet? He won't be back. Oh, what's happened? He's joined up. Has he? Oh, I'm kind of sorry to hear that. Stella will likely be over before he's finished his training. Do you think so, John? Do you really think so? Of course it will. I see the Germans are retreating in all the fronts. The fair scared white to see when your lads stopped at the bayonet. What? I said the Germans were terrified of the bayonet and no wonder. Cold steel. That's the stuff right in the belly. John. Hey? Oh, I'm sorry, mistress. If you've ever gutted a rabbit or a hen, 
You can guess what's inside a man. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. You'll be all right. You've not to worry. Thank you.